All right, as promised, today we are going to be playing a game called Alter Ego by PhD. Welcome to Alter Ego. Have you ever wondered what your life could have been like if things had gone a little bit differently? Well, in this game you can find out. The game begins not long before your first birthday. This game I have played before. Will you be a male or a female? It was originally released on the Commodore 64, and in that version you could only play as a male. The female version was added in a bit later, and it is different. The scenarios that come across are a bit different, and not the best kind of ways. This game is a game that really should be played more than once, so I'll probably be going through as a female. But right now we'll just go through normally. Would you like to begin with a personality quiz? It's 26 questions long. Sure. Uh, one. I will probably try to answer these questions honestly. So basically, it's, uh, this game is sort of like a choose your own adventure kind of book. If you know me, like me best. I become, when I am ill, I become short tempered and snap at people. No. I am likely to speak whatever comes to my mind. That gets more untrue as time goes on. An important part of every job is knowing whom to impress. Sure. I'm a light sleeper who stirs at even the slightest sound. Eh, that's getting less and less true as time goes on. Revenge is sweet. Uh, eh, sure, I don't actively seek it, but it's nice when it happens. I often feel slow, tired, and no. I am fascinated by car accidents, and no. I am extremely sensitive to criticism. Sure. I get nervous performing in front of people, even when the task is something that I know by heart. Yes. The people around me seem happier than I do. Uh, no. I often get the urge to... Yes. Who doesn't? On important matters, I usually follow my parents' advice, even when I... No. It is possible that we live in a world where people can watch our every move. Uh, yes. This game came out in the 80s when that was, uh... Less true. Uh, well, not, no. It is okay to tell a white lie if it's guaranteed to bring personal, great personally in. Uh, sure. It is often pointless to try and discuss problems with other people. Uh, false. I am easily embarrassed. False. Ch false. I find it difficult. Uh, true. Uh, Sure, that's not a yes or no question, but you can usually judge of it. No. One way of getting people to treat you fairly is to take an aggressive stance and make them no. I think these questions. I think questions like this are no. Okay, welcome to Birth and Infancy. Like Deus Ex Machina, this game takes you through the stages of life. This time, though, it's your own life. And uh, your very first choice is determining how you are, how the birth is going to be. So come out peacefully. What a good sport. Are you sure you're ready for this? It can get pretty hectic out there. I'll give you one more chance to stay a while longer. What would you like to do? Select an action. Yeah. That's a spirit. You are an easy delivery. Your mom and dad took special classes to help you. Go out there and give them heck. You're still too young to swear. The fuck I am. Happy birthday and welcome to the world. From now on, life will begin to change rapidly. You will have to learn to accept responsibility, build up your resources, and manage yourself physically and emotionally. The events that transpire over the course of the next few days include You are the most beautiful baby in the maternity ward and everyone takes your picture. You develop an allergy to milk and have to be given special formula. Babies aren't supposed to drink cow's milk anyway. The doctors note that your breathing is a bit irregular and suggest special monitoring equipment to avoid serious problems. Next chapter. Okay, so here is the first chapter, uh, the infancy stage. The things towards the top here are more recent, and these things towards the bottom are later. You cannot play all of the events in one playthrough. The game will automatically throw you forward. You may select the actions in any order they are sorted chronologically. So right here is your first few days of life, and uh, 
down here is towards uh, later on when you're walking and crawling and learning to talk. Over here, these are your stats and apparently your money. I don't think they do much of anything. I mean, they have very little effects. Like, if you don't have enough stats to do something that the game thinks you won't do, the game won't let you do it. It won't make you make that choice. And your age. Select an action. Continue, skip on to the next life stage, start the game over again. Make the text bigger or smaller, change the background color, change the page animations. Change the background color, please. Use a black background. Return to the game. Continue. Okay, now it's more uh, closer to the original version, even though we're not using... I think this is based on the browser version. Once again, I bought this off Steam. You could used to be able to play this for free, but then the guy took it off of the browser and just decided to sell it. Which, uh, fine, it's his game. He has the choice to do that. So we have intellectual, uh, social, emotional, uh, and family. Oh, yes, and physical. Now, physical challenges are interesting ones because those are the ones where you can actually die. I have never been able to die as an infant. People tend to stop you from doing something stupid. So I don't know if it's possible to die at this stage, but after the infancy stage, yes, you can die, even as a, a child. So let's start with the first event here. It's basically a choose-your-own-adventure book with, uh, with life. Patient, yes, you certainly are. You will occupy your time staring at walls and ceilings until she returns. There are pretty pictures on the wall that stimulate and contribute to the development of creativity that will undoubtedly possess in later life. So, that 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 is it. That is the game. You don't have many skills as yet. And as a matter of fact, life is pretty boring. Select the mood. Restless and irritable and look around. And the game in infancy is uh, kind of boring. Actually, I like Alter Ego more as a concept than a game. I should say that right now. Keep looking around. Keep looking. Congratulations, you have found your hand. This may not seem like much of a big discovery, but it is. You'll have to learn how to control your hands as a part of childhood development. When you are an adolescent, those hands are going to get you into quite a bit of trouble, because that requires a different kind of hand control. Wink, wink. This game is actually very adult for the time period it came out in 1986. Now, my overall feelings is that I really do want someone to make this game nowadays, but actually make it, you know, like a real game. Sure, we have games like The Sims and Animal Crossing that are quote-unquote life simulators, but they're very downplayed versions. Like, uh, let's do a physical challenge. You are alone in the kitchen and begin exploring the closets and refrigerator. Select the mood. Adventurous. Move towards the pantry. The pantry door swings open and you see all kinds of beautifully colored jars, boxes, and bottles. One jar looks particularly pretty. It's shiny and brown and full of liquid. You unscrew the, the cap and smell what's inside. It smells sweet. Uh, put it back. You have just avoided a potentially lethal accident. Good judgment has saved your life. So, uh, yeah. Like, life simulators don't have that kind of deal nowadays. Lying on your stomach in crib, you notice something interesting, an object... An interesting object an arm's distance away. Okay, we're going to stop the text-based games for the next few ones, because I'm having too much trouble reading as of late. It has a round shape on the bottom and a ring on the bottom. Determination. Grasp for the object. Shake the rattle. This is terrific fun. You spin it and fall asleep. Exhausted from the long track of one end of the crib to the other. So yeah, I'm not really skimping you. This is all there is at the beginning. Infancy, well, infancy is not slow in actual life, but as a game, it, it pretty much is. Agreed by a loud, nosy neighbor who has a child just around your age.
angry. Yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Uh, sorry if I'm not just reading everything in detail. Uh, I don't know. It, it's not much to say. Or we're going to have a hell of a lot of time when I get to the few text adventures that are in the book. You are lying on the floor in a big room on a soft, furry blanket. You are on your back, staring at the shadows that sometimes creep across the ceiling. Every so often, Mom or Dad passes by and makes a funny face. Your hands grope in all directions, and your feet pat the floor gently, almost out of your control. Uh, sure. But it's a good exercise. You can roll about halfway to one side. Okay. Intellect. You are lying down in your crib while your mom and dad are speaking in the room. You hear their voices deep and muffled from beyond the door. Why aren't they paying attention to you? Sad. Make noises. Okay. Like, there's just not much here. Like, this is the kind of game that you'd expect to be very interesting and very fun to let's play. But it's, it's not. You have just woken from a nice long nap. Your mom comes into the room and wants to hold you. Select the mood. Uh, sleepy smile. It's a dog's life, isn't it? Nothing you do all day except eat, sleep, and wonder what life will be like when you're older. Does life really change after two? Mom is uh, coming closer. Uh, yeah. Very good. Eye contact with your caretakers is very reinforcing to them. Parents often mistakenly think that it is the children who need all the attention. Believe me, parents want it too. Your eye contact with her makes her smile. Social and emotional development spheres are increasing. Smile back. Be still. You'll have more chances to learn this extremely valuable skill. Okay. Uh, the game does have a sense of humor at points. Let's see. You are exploring a pen, playpen and feeling very lively. Like a prize fighter, you grab a hold of the playpen bar and shake back and forth, flexing your knees. Uh, the, like, if you take something that doesn't make much sense, uh, it won't let you do it. It says it doesn't make much sense what you're trying to do. Your determination allows you to concentrate at the task I am. Uh, yeah. You can't see where you're going. Your head is down and you're throwing it. You spin it on and grab the railing just before you fall to the mat. Uh, yes. Stumble across and firmly grasp the rail. Yay! So, first steps, uh, let's try family. You go to Aunt Lucy's house, it's chilly outside, and you need to be dressed in a coverall type suit. Uh, playful... Yeah, sure. This is one of your favorite games, uh, and tries to distract you by making faces and singing the Go Bye Bye song. Parents are always singing because they know that music will so often soothe the sad child. This makes you laugh, which in turn causes even greater difficulty to your mom. It becomes a vicious cycle until the grandma intervenes. The grandma tries to help you. Uh, yes. Uh, just give in. You get. An, uh, you suffer no serious long or short short term consequences. Okay. Intellectual. You are very quietly playing with your father's brand new electronic calculator. Look, the back of it lifts off very easily. Inquisitive. Look, touch, and take apart. Look. <laughs> you know Dad will be pleased that you're fixing his toy. Yeah. Mom and Dad are entertaining some friends, and you are minding your own business sitting quietly in the corner of your room. Suddenly, a man with a big nose and shiny head puts his face right up to you and says something in a loud voice. Terror! Why not? Uh, yeah, this is your first encounter with the person who... I, I'm very tempted to skip to the next portion, but I, I do want to play the game to completion. And that involves just waiting this out, because the game does pick up after infancy. I mean, they're not going to throw the worst possible shit at an infant. There's going to be a couple of things, but uh, that's about it. You are sitting in your high chair, eating your lunch, which consists of crackers, strained peanuts, and a mug of milk. You are just learning how to eat with utensils. Curious? Uh, try to use the spoon, why not? 
keep playing with the spoon and cup. Curiosity and persistence are the early signs of an inventive personality. One day during late childhood, you may find yourself attempting to rewire the electric hair wire and have a shocking experience and star in a subpar comedy. Stir the... Yeah. It makes bubbles. And oh, this is great. Your mother fails to understand the true significance of your discoveries, but acts surprisingly tolerant. Okay. Uh, here. Up until this point of life, Weasley Rabbit, your stuffed toy, has been one of your best friends. You take him everywhere with you, but he's beginning to get on in years. One of his ears is torn off, and a recent eye injury has made his face look a little lopsided. It suggested that Weasley should be retired. You wake up one day to discover Weasley has been moved from the place where you last spotted him. Panicky and seek information. Even though you are driven to find out why your friend has suddenly disappeared, you are not in a frame of mind that would ensure a satisfactory outcome. You question everyone in the house as to whereabouts of Weasley. You confront your mother who looks very, uh, guilty. Uh, sure, become hysterical. Your panic and hysteria makes your mom feel guilty about throwing out the doll. She spends an afternoon tracking it down and restoring it to mint condition, performing a major surgery to ensure that Weasley will be with you for a long while. And I do think your stats change over time. Uh, it's good to have as much as possible, I would uh, suppose. Uh, social, intellectual, trustworthiness is very low for some reason. While being taken to the park, your dad meets an old college buddy who is wheeling a baby uh, about your age. As the two dads talk, you casually begin to eye the baby in the other uh, carriage. Uh, curious. Uh, sure, why not? A baby, you wonder if it has all the same parts as your... Yeah, why not? The baby touches you back. You are exploring the environment and learning about one another. This causes your intellectual and social spheres to increase. You seem to like one another. You have made your first friend. Uh, yeah. You are touching something smooth and shiny. You pat it with your hand a few times. Pass it. Yeah, yeah keep touching. It's flat and a little cool. Cool. Wait a minute. There's a baby in there. Who is that baby? You. That's right, you're looking at yourself in a mirror. Uh, sure, you can say no, and it, uh... Of course you are. All babies are beautiful. You do not have a very good self-image. Like I said, the game... Uh, Quote-unquote game. Like, this one, I, I would technically consider it a game, but it's more like a, a choose-your-own-adventure book. It, it's definitely on that borderline area around facade. It's announced to you during a heart-to-heart -heart talk that it's time for you to give up the bottle and drink from a glass like a big boy. Disappoint, uh... Yeah. She has a box for you. Let's open the box. Oh boy, a plastic super duck drinking cup with a bendable straw. Look at this, it even has her name on it. Mom tells you super duck wrote it there himself. Mom is laying it on a bit thick at the moment. Alright, you are at your friend Billy's house. His mom gives you both a box of crayons and two pieces of paper. Uh, artistic, let's draw on the paper. You are behaving yourself nicely so far. You draw... Uh, yeah, sure. You can have a good time at someone else's house, but there's no place like home. Uh, all right, and on the second playthrough, if it forces me to go on further, I'll go. I'll start from the bottom and work my way up. Even though, like I said, the female uh, playthrough has different life events. I don't think so much in the infancy, but later on, you're sitting in a large place, and a furry man walks up to you. He's walking around you in circles. It, it's clearly a uh, dog. So make noises at the furry man. You yell out to the furry man, and he walks over to you. He makes a noise that sounds like this. Rough. And then he sits on your leg. Uh, yeah. You grab his head between your two hands. Hey, now that man is licking you all over the face. Mom says he's kissing you. Uh, sure. His nose is cold, and the hairs tickle your face. He tastes very salty and has bad breath. Uh, you are in a large department store, waiting in line, and there's an extremely well-endowed woman standing in front of you. She smiles. 
it looks like she may be an interesting person to talk to. Inquisitive, ask her some questions because kids do that. Uh, yeah, let's let's go with that one. Okay. You are alone in your parents' bedroom. There's a shiny silver quarter on the table. Honest and leave it alone. This might have been a tough decision for you. At your age and even sometimes into adulthood, honesty is less often than clear cut. You might have figured that you had nothing to gain by stealing the quarter. You are right about that. You gained in the trustworthiness category. Yeah, oh, that's a lot of trustworthiness. Like, a lot. It's just the silver dollar. Uh. Tired and asked to stay up a little bit longer. Dad explains how tired you are and what a busy day it will be tomorrow. He offers to carry you. When you get to the bedroom, you can... Uh, yeah, let's, let's go with that. You don't even remember what the story was about. It's Saturday morning, and Dad asks you to help with some chores. The Super Duck cartoon hour has just begun. Uh, helpful... Sorry, that combination of choices is not allowed. Please select a different option. Uh, passive? Does it work? I'm gonna say no. Of course it doesn't. You're becoming a TV addict at a very young age. Before you know it, you'll be staying up late watching old odd couple reruns. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly not a TV addict. It's, it's not like my job depends on it. You are in a sandbox playing with your favorite toy. A larger, stronger child pulls it away from you and screams, Mine. Angry, grab it back. This child seems much stronger than you are. He puts three fingers to your mouth and tries to push you away. He is holding the metal toy above your hand. Of course, you bite him. You bit him hard. He drops your toy and runs off. Yay! Defending myself. Time to feed the fish. You pinch a small amount of food between your fingers and tap on the glass. There is no sign of Gabriella. Confused and uh, we'll do the same old thing. She is stuck under a rock. She is stiff and her eyes are puffed out. You think, uh, yeah, call from mom. Her eyes seems puffy and her body is stiff. You are relieved to see that she hasn't jumped out of the bowl. And the first encounter with death is through a fish. Uh, kind of the only reason that people get fish anymore. Mom stutters through the questions to your, uh, to the answers to your questions. She is uncomfortable and sad. Mom explains that Gabby can't swim anymore. Mom says that she's dead and that she's gone away. How can that be? She is right there. What is dead, you wonder? You are confused. Mom says that Gabby has to be taken out of the bowl. Uh, yeah, flush down the toilet. Even though Mom has put on a sad face, you giggle at the thought of Gabby swimming in the bowl. You wonder if she will tickle you the next time you go to the bathroom. It isn't a real laugh, but you don't know what else to do. Okay, intellectual. You are in the back seat of a car during a very long ride. Select the mood. Tired and uh, active and play games, why not? Your mom has taken some picture books and coloring books for you to play with. Uh, color. Coloring is a solitary activity. You take the book and color in a picture of Super Duck. You have missed an opportunity to have a positive social interaction with your mom. You have just passed through infancy. A brief look up to this time shows the following. Your family has been positive and nurturant. Nurturant. That, that's a weird word. And as a result, you have begun to form the critical bonds that are important during this phase of life. Physically, you have been a healthy baby. Socially, during this phase in life, nothing is really much expected of you. After all, you're still too young to throw a successful cocktail party, and frankly, anyone who still dribbles on himself probably won't make the ideal dinner guest. However, by now, there are some things you should have mastered. Your progress in this area shows you have been the type of child who charms the lollipops off of people. You have been the type of child who is huggable and gets his cheek pinched by old ladies with bright red lipstick. Now, regarding your emotional and personality development... You are a fairly trustworthy little boy, making your share of exploratory excursion 
into the world of the unknown and forbidden. The bathroom and under the kitchen sink. Your folks could trust you in most cases, but when all the chocolates have one bite taken out of them, it's a fair guess whose teeth marks have made those jagged impressions. Your thoughtfulness characteristic really doesn't count for much in this module. Most children often find themselves at the mercy of their whims and impulses. You are allowed to be cranky now. People will tolerate it much better than when you are a teenager. Teenager is one word, buddy. Then your whining and carrying on will seem much more objectionable. One thing about your character that has a tendency to put people off is your aggressiveness. You are the type of baby who likes to pull on loose pieces of clothing, hair, and any bulbous fleshy object that comes within your reach. You're going to have to learn the meaning of make nice. This wraps up your status for the first module. I hope you like yourself. If not, you can always try to improve yourself in the modules to come. There's plenty of time. Welcome to childhood. Practice yourself, for heaven's sake, in the little things, and thence proceed to the greater. Uh, I need to be more well-read. Uh, I will be right back, and then we will continue. Alright, we're on to childhood. And as you can see, there are quite a few more of the physical challenges. And uh, at the end, we even have our first work challenge. Remember, the physical ones are the ones where you can die. You arrive at the dentist and discover four large, four large cavities that need to be filled. Although, you can't die in every single physical challenge. I think I should make that uh, clear. Brave. Block out the sensations with your mind. Your status sheet suggests that you are, are emotionally, you are not capable of performing such a feat. The pain sneaks into your consciousness, but it's not unbearable. This experience will toughen you for the next time. I am recording, yes. Okay. So, yeah. Going on, since uh, after the childhood stage, you can start skipping around a bit and it won't seem chronologically confusing. Because if you start at the bottom of the infancy, you go from uh, walking around and talking to people to you're discovering your hand. So the first emotional stage of childhood, mom has just taken a job that requires her to be away in the morning and early afternoon. She decides to enroll you in a nursery school program. Upon your arrival, you are greeted by another lady with very skinny legs and large round glasses. Uh, there are children playing with buckets of sand, building blocks, and other activities. There's a small boy sitting in the corner with tears streaming from his eyes, a runny nose, and cheeks red from crying. Uh, <laughs> give the lady, yeah. Your excitement is a positive sign that you're trying to adapt to this new environment. You realize that your mom will be coming back, so you tend to make friends. You see a little boy your age playing in the sandwich trucks. Uh, sure, let's go with this one. He holds the truck close to his body, and... Uh, yeah. He wants no part of you. Ah. Uh, getting a little too close to home, game. While you are playing quietly in your room, you are startled by a loud, muffled sounds coming from someone place else. It seems that your parents are having a terrible fight over something. Your father's deep voice seems to be shaking the whole house. Your mother's piercing scream seems to sound like she's being hurt terribly. Also, if you have any sort of emotional trauma, I will say that this game may be a very bit triggering coming up. Because so far, it has been rather cute and down-to-earth, but no, there are, there are some... Uh, the yelling gets louder and louder, and then suddenly everything is quiet. When you see your parents later, they act as nothing has happened. Mom's hair is ruffled as she seems to be very tired. You can't figure out what has happened. Or can you? Yeah, the game can get a little bit uh, close to home in some of the worst ways possible, depending on the kind of person that you are. And it can be going to some very uh, disturbing uh, places. While rummaging around the kitchen drawer, you come across a, bat a book of matches. Select a mood. Conscientious, put the book of matches away. Like, a positive choice. There is nothing to be gained here except disaster. You have made just prevented a major loss to you and your family. Like, I'll go through the uh, physical ones first to see, to show you samples of what kind of shit this game happens. Because it's kind of stuff that has not been in game since. 
and even today, this kind of stuff wouldn't be seen as acceptable by the wider general audience. When you are outside, playing alone, a car pulls over to the side of the road and the driver motions for you to come over. You notice the license plate says OBO237. Suspicious, stay where you are. He motions for you to come closer. He has a kind enough face. You hear him say that he's a policeman looking for a friend of yours. He asks if you will get in and help him find your friend. Walk and run away. You move away from the man, suspicious that he might not be telling the truth. This is smart. Intellectual sphere arises sharply. This man hurts children. And yes, that is a scenario in which you can die. You can may select the actions in any order, uh, but let's go back to the beginning. Uh, you have been invited to a sleepover at your best friend's house. This is your first sleepaway experience. Uh, excitement? Sure. Yeah. Even though you're very excited, you still want to make sure that everything will be just as it was when you left. You were sure that it will be. Your little bit of hesitancy is more of a sign, more than anything, a sign of maturity. Have fun. Your mom is in the bathtub taking a nice relaxing bath. You are playing quietly in your room. All of a sudden, the doorbell rings. Mom doesn't seem to hear it. Uh, yeah. You approach the door and say, who is it? In your most grown-up voice. It is a salesman asking where your mommy is. Uh, I, uh, he thanks you and walks quickly to the door. You are developing a knack for bluntness. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I will give the game credit. It, it did make me laugh. Like I said, I, I do admire some things about this game. I just wish it was more of a, you know, a game. This choose-your-own-adventure thing, it, it doesn't come off as strongly as it could. I like this more in concept than in actual, uh... You hit the Brussels spread. Yeah, sure, why not? What kind of child is that obedient? Have you ever heard the expression, develop a taste for something? That's a nice way of saying that you were forced to eat it as a child. Brussels sprouts may be good for you, but it's also the kind of food that makes you have bad dreams. You could have gotten away with not eating them. I have actually never had Brussels sprouts because my parents never actually made them. I don't think many people do anymore. An exciting movie is on television. The whole family is in the living room watching it. You get a drink of water and return to find that all the good seats have been taken. Yeah, let's 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 do that. Access this if you lose you for a second and then ask mom to answer the door. She <laughs> uh, Your dad has promised that he will fix your bicycle. He is taking a nap, so he's not doing anything. Now it seems like a good time to remind him. Uh yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. Your patience pays off. When Dad wakes up, he asks if he will fix. When Dad wakes up, you ask if he will fix your bike. He is feeling so good that he asks you to go on a little trip with him. He takes you to the bicycle shop and buys you a brand new bike. Sometimes being nice pays off. Sometimes it doesn't. One of your playmates is the daughter of your mother's friend. Her name is Cindy. One day when. You and Cindy are alone. You begin to become very curious about one another. Cindy suggests you play a make-believe game of Doctor. Uh, shy. Let, let yeah, let's let's not. I'm not even. I'm not even going there. This game can only lead to one place, and you're not ready for it yet. Cindy replies, "Okay, you are the truck driver, and you get into a bad accident. They have to take you to the doctor right away." Uh, you say, uh, "Yeah, let's." A diplomatic way out of the situation. You ask your mother a silly question, then return, hoping that Cindy has thought of a new game. Cindy persists when you come back. You can... What the fuck is wrong with you? You are a big baby. Okay, whatever. Let's, let's not even concern ourselves with that one. You are in school, and the teacher is giving a boring lecture. The boy is sitting two seats away and rolling up a piece of paper and putting it in his mouth. Using the barrel of his pen, he spits the paper at the blackboard where it lands on a wet splat. The teacher fury is furious. She screams, who did this? Everyone in the class is howling until she promises that if the person who did this will not come forward, the whole class will get a get a punishment. You are probably the only person who saw the true culprit. Mixed feelings, I'll, I'll keep quiet. Ambivalence can be a difficult emotion to handle. You probably feel a little anxious, some guilt, and a pinch of self-criticism. 
you can fantasize about telling. And send. Ah, oh, goddammit. Uh, let's have another brush with death. You need eyeglasses. The first day you wear them in school, everyone calls you four eyes. Oh, yeah, this game was made in the 80s. Your parents refuse to get you contact lenses. Uh, it's painful. To, okay. So yeah, you probably get what each of the different ones do. There is there is a lot of social in childhood. Uh, the game is very critical of my own life. At school, all your friends are talking about a television program that you would not stay up to watch. A friend asks if you saw it. Unashamed, I didn't watch that show. Your confidence keeps them from making fun of you. Someone even offers to let you sleep over at his house next time it is on. Sometimes friends can move. Yeah, I don't care about your stupid show. You have been just ordered to bed by your parents in the middle of your favorite television show. Uh, desperate? Sure. Yay. Uh, when, when the hell is bedtime, like, not at a round number of 30 minutes or a flat hour? That, that's very strange to me. Your best friend challenges you to a rock throwing competition. Uh, I'd be reluctant about this. Like, I'm, I'm definitely playing it safe because, like, an actual child's gonna do some of this stupid shit at some point. Turn down the offer. Uh, let, let's see if these two work together. God damn. I, I could make it work. Your friend then friends to tell everyone at school that you are a girl unless you throw the rock. It, it's. Your friend calls you a chicken. Okay. Yeah. There is one more ice pop in the freezer that is being saved for another family member. Your mouth waters at the thought of this t cool, tasty treat. Ha ha! Joke's on you! I don't like ice pops! They make my teeth hurt and the sound makes me cringe. Uh, no. It's time to sell raffle tickets for the school baseball team again. Well, wait, 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 yeah, with, what a team. Selling four whole books in less than an hour. It's a powerful, uh, awesome uh, social development. Gentleness and calmness are still very low. Although, yeah, hard to increase without consequence, I think. All right. All your friends are waiting for you to come out after school. You have a ton of homework and have been watching television since you came home. On your way out, your mother asks, did you do all your homework? Uh, semi why are you, like, if you say honest and then go, no, you can't do it. Like, why is there two different options here? That's something that confused me about this game. You can't be honest and say, no, or I've only got a little left. Like, Semi-honest, and I've only got a little left. Dishonest, by saying no. Honest, by saying yes. Semi-honest is the truthfulness equivalent of semi-pregnant. Your mother says, finish what you have left. <laughs> okay, this, this game does have a sense of humor. And I do respect it for going into areas that most games don't. Like, this was one of the very few games in the 80s made strictly for adults. Which is definitely something unique about it. You've just turned off the television set and your room is pitch dark. Through the shadows, you notice that your closet door is open just a crack. You can almost see the images of a black hooded axe murderer squinting at you through the door. He's waiting, waiting for you to close your eyes and fall asleep. In the quiet of the night, you can hear his hoarse breath making deep gurgling sounds. You look away from the door and then look back. Uh, calm, uh, get help. Yeah, let's, let's try that one. All of a sudden, the covers rise to your scream. It's the trusty Gudo, your dog. He comes running out of the room howling. He wants no part of you for the rest of the night. Okay. Uh. Jill Brady is always untying your shoes and running away. 
Today she's wearing a skirt. She bent over picking up a pile of books from the floor. Uh, absorbed... Yeah, let's... Uh, I'm not even touching that. You have much more important things on your mind. Like how to skate your mom to let you join football. And how to sneak into Friday the 13th Part 45. Uh, dude, you, you gotta have more imagination. We're about at Part 90 now. And why, Mr. Johnson, the biology teacher, is allowed to wear the same suit... It's a hot sunny day, you and your friend are tr sitting around trying to think of something to do. You got a great idea, let's play a practical, uh... Let the air out of the car tires, spray down with the hose. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, what the fuck? You and your friend have even more fun talking about all the things you could do to dad. These fantasies are more fun and never wind up ha by having dad spank you. When Dad wakes up, he sees that your friend are giggling. You can't understand why you keep calling him names like Old Hotfoot. Well, that worked out. Uh, let's let's try brushing with Death again. A very aggressive boy starts an argument with you and challenges you to a fight after school. Everyone whispers about the big fight. It looks like there will be a crowd watching. Oh, okay. Uh, can we? Can these go together? You choose not to risk the danger of getting yourself seriously hurt. This boy was capable of killing you and might have done so had you chosen to stay and fight him. Like, I don't know if that situation could actually kill you, but uh, I'm going to take the game's word for it. The boy who sits next to you in school has passed you a note, folded in a tight square. He motions you to read it. You look around the room. Mrs. Hennessy, the meanest teacher in school, has her back to the class. The note says, Who has more crust than the entire surface of the earth? Uh, the noise attracts Mrs. Hennessy. She begins walking down the aisle in your harp against race. Uh, can't you use that scrap paper or something else before you throw it away? Protect our natural resources. I actually had a Mrs. Hennessy, and she was actually one of the nicer teachers that I had. And that was in high school, though. Your mother has given you permission to have a party. You want to invite most of the kids in your, from your class. There is one child that you are having second thoughts about inviting. His name is Louis Feedback. Feedback. All the kids call him Louis Feedback because he is very fat. Uh, yeah, invite him. Uh, try to convince him. Louis is completely overjoyed. This is the first time he's ever feel, felt like one of the guys. Some of your friends do stay home that night and refuse to speak at you to school. Louis's mother calls you up and thanks you for being so generous. Louis's mother also happens to be extremely rich. On your next school vacation, she flies you and Louis to Hawaii for a week to stay there with relatives. So yeah, as a child, many of the nice moral things you do do pay off. That doesn't stay true for the whole game. You are in the candy store buying candy with a $5 bill given to you by your mother. Your bill comes to 50 cents. The man gives you back change, but no dollars. Confused and question the man. The man tells him to uh, disagree. He says, come on now, kid, I told you. Now get the fuck out of here. You can keep disagreeing. No matter how much you disagree, he still insists. Uh, get help. Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, the man tells your mother that that kid gave me a one. An argument ensures that your mother threatens to call the Better Business Bureau. Eventually, your mother gives up. At least she knows the man was a crook. Okay, oh, keep going. I uh, got to check. Am I recording? Yes, okay. I like to keep track because I've had some incidents already in the series where I had the microphone off or some other kind of shit. Your teacher and your mother are traded recipes for an upcoming bake sale. Before you leave school, your teacher asks if you would be kind enough to run a booth at the bake sale, especially for her. Immediately, your friends begin to snicker behind your back. Embarrassed but compliant. Your friends call you a brown nose in the teacher's pet. Your current level of hostility suggests that this would make you lash out at them. You get in a fist fight with one of the other boys, and the teacher takes you off the sale. 
They, these, these are important. These are very, very important. If, or you could just go along with what the game says. Like, the game... I mean, it doesn't give you the option of telling you if this was impossible or if there was, like, a percentage chance or something. I don't know, I, I don't... Like, the actual mechanics of the game, they do need a lot of refinement. What we have here is about half of something. They got everything right except the actual game part of the game. Melissa Harper is the prettiest girl in your class. You have been giving each other the eye for about two weeks now. You're all set to ask her for a date when your best friend, who happens to be taller and better looking than you, confesses that he cannot sleep at night because of her. Oh, no. Ugh. Frank... Yeah. Bringing your feelings out in the open prevents you from acting on them in a destructive way. You can... Uh, yeah. This doesn't sit comfortably with either you or your friend. You both decide that your friendships are more important than a day with Melissa. Okay. Your friend has borrowed a dollar from you and has been promising to pay you back for weeks. Every time he a you ask him for the money, he puts you off. Uh, impatient. Your impatience causes tempers to flare between you and friend. He stops speaking with you and you never get paid back. Warning, this episode contains subject matter of a sexual nature. Do you wish to continue? Why not? In the schoolyard, your friends are discussing something very secretively. You go over to see what's going on, and you hear one of them say something very strange. It has to do with the, ma the way you were made. Unaffected, uh, yeah, let's go to skeptical and uh, ask your mother for the real story. You find it difficult to believe, but you have seen in Wild Kingdom enough times to know that anything is possible. You confront your mother with the information as you remember hearing it. She says that she will talk to you about it later. Since she is strict, she is likely to be anxious about the topic of sex. She tells you the children are the creation of God and that they are a miracle. Then she says that's all you need to know for now. Okay, uh, that's probably the not best way of doing it, but whatever. So, yes, the game does go into some topics about sex, like some very, very serious uh, topics of sex. Who founded the American Federation... Okay, yeah, you are not correct. Uh, who is the first vice president... George Clinton. John Adams, you are correct. Who is the first ruler to consolidate the... Yes, Lenin. That you are not... Which of these scientists is credited with the discovery for oxygen? Uh, Shepard. Who wrote... Fitzgerald. Okay. Pop quiz out of nowhere. You are rocking. You are walking around the store with your friend, and you notice that he sneaks a small item in his pocket. You ask him what he is doing, and he tells you how easy it is to shoplift, saying they never check kids. Uh, yeah. You get angry with him for jeopardizing you by stealing. Unfortunately, you haven't noticed that he is sneaking a pack of playing cards in your jacket pocket. The manager sees them and accuses you of stealing and calls home. Because you are trustworthy, Mom believes you were framed. Alright. Warning, this sub... Uh, he, I, I gave you guys the warning beforehand, so... You are in a house alone. While you are exploring the drawers, you notice a stack of Playboy magazines underneath the pile of clothing. Disinterested, put the magazines away. Perhaps you aren't curious about women yet. That is perfectly okay. As you get older, you may find them much more interesting. You have just passed through the childhood phase of life. Family life is progressing very well. Dad is still the greatest hero of all time, and Mom is pretty terrific too. Physically, you are healthy. You can track the standard fare of childhood diseases, assorted sniffles, coughs, mumps, and stomach aches. Socially, this can be an awkward phase of life, especially when you hit the ripe old age of 9 or 10. Should you like girls, should you not like girls, decisions, decisions. All in all, you are extremely lovable. You are well-mannered and respectful of adults. I may be mistaken, but I see a little bit... Uh, considering the last event? Uh, now, regarding your emotional and personality development, 
You are a remarkably trustworthy young man. Your sense of ethics and fair play are quite remarkable for a child your age. The, de the degree to which you display aggressive types of behavior is somewhat alarming. You can be nasty and spiteful at times. You are about to enter adolescence. It is a somewhat hectic time of life, full of surprises. There are many very high highs and many low lows. In each year, you will gain responsibilities. You'll also notice that people begin to start forgiving you less for things previously described as mere childhood habits. You'll be expected to leave your burping and other questionable talents in the social circles where they were unanimously approved of, your peer group. Oh yes, and then there's the matter of girls. If you haven't noticed them much in this phase, watch out, they've noticed you. He was a bold man that first ate an oyster. What does that have to do with being a... Okay, lots more social stuff and more and more job opportunities. So, uh, less physical stuff, though. Uh, that makes sense, as children are more vulnerable physically than teenagers. Tonight is Halloween. Some of your more fun-loving friends are going door to door. Some of your more mischievous friends are going out to play pank pranks. You must describe, uh, yeah, let's... Fun-loving door-to-door. Collect money for charity? Uh, uh, make casual small talk. This catches them off guard. You offer them a piece of candy or two and you each go their own separate ways. Yeah. I, I know how to stay out of other people's business. You are in one of your ultra-cool modes. While cruising through your ha the house, you bump your foot on a piece of furniture and you let a swear word sneak out. Your mother calls you from the other word, other room, and she says, "Did I say? Did you say what I thought you said?" Uh, truthful. Uh, wisely, you drop the cool act. It's important to be cool, but when mom has her temper up, she can put on put you on ice permanently. And yeah, my parents were swearing at me far before I was swearing at them. That's all I'm saying. There goes Andrea. Andrea Weiner, Jeremy has said that she likes guys who are rough and tough. She is looking over at you and smiling. Uh, rough and tough. Uh, fuck you. You are at least partially dominated by your physical characteristics. So this is a role you feel quite comfortable in. Andrea drinks it in like a high-protein malted. God, this game was so made in the 80s. You ask her out to a hockey game and she accepts. After the game, she beats you in ping pong five games straight. On the back of a cereal box, you see a, you see a contest to name the cartoon character that represents the cereal. You enter and because you are very bright and creative, you win. Your prize consists of a new bicycle. Uh, okay. I think that was a random event. Starting now, you do get random events. And look at the here, we have... Uh, New stats, schooling. None of these are experiences. Okay, fuck you. Relationships. Uh, you can start dating. Uh, in school. Who would you like to meet? Uh, so many choices. These these people all have so many different characteristics. It's going to be very, very hard for me to wrap my head around who each of these people are. Uh, Sarah? Why not? She is not very... You could have... Okay. Uh, all right. Why not? Why not? Age. Okay. We we already we already looked at that. You are young. Too young. Okay. That's job responsibilities and risks. You decide that you would like to try out for your school's baseball team. Continue. Uh, continue. The pitcher looks at you. Choose. Continue. It winds up. Continue. The ball streaks towards you. It's hard to stop at this point. Like, what, what are you going to do? Just walk off the baseball field? Like, being a teenager is associated with uh, risks. Next pitch. Uh, continue. C 
continue. Continue. Congratulations, you made the team. You are now okay. So, Christina Farber got a little while playing spin the bottle at a friend's house. As a result, your neck looks like it was stung by a pack of wild hornets. As you walk out of the bathroom, Dad inquires about the curious looking marks. Select the mood. Crafty. Tell the. Okay, I, I give an excuse. Whatever excuse you think of only makes him feel angry that you would take over such a fool. An argument ensures that you get a boring lecture about the potential dangers of the dreaded hickey. And create a blood clot that, uh, even though it happens to be true, you probably don't pay too much attention to it. A little while later, one day you overhear your mother and father talking about the fact that they are very short on money. The bank is ready to foreclose on their mortgage. Because your familial sphere indicates your good family relationships, you pull through this period of hardship with very few difficulties. Uh, well, it, it's uh, adolescence, so... Five friends have decided... Uh, you are elected to make the purchase. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> Eat your heart out, big mouth. <laughs> You're probably the type of person people all really care. You may not have any reason to use them, but none of your friends will ever know that. You distribute them to your friends who put them in their wallets. A couple of days, your friend comes up and asks, Did you use yourself yet? You probably don't tell them a thing except just use your imagination. You are cool. All your friends go to the shore for... What the fuck? Like most daring fantasies that come up during adolescence, everyone has big ideas, but few follow through on them. Several people actually go skinny dipping, but almost everyone gives their clothes on. You're on a school bus, on a class field trip, getting cozy with your newest girlfriend. Uh... Yes, have an intellectual discussing. Got how romantic. A little while later, you have just spent your last dime of available cash on a new record album. Gotta, gotta love those antiques. On the way out of the store, a beautiful girl asks if you would take her to a movie later. Because you have excellent social skills, you convince her to come over to your house to listen to your new album instead. You are irresistible, so she naturally accepts. Uh, I, I can't relate to much of what goes on in this segment because like, I was never into girls and I didn't really do all the daring, stupid shit that teenagers are quote-unquote supposed to do. Sung Li is a new Chinese student who can barely speak English. He appears awkward, is not aware of modern styles of dress, and is a bit clumsy. Everyone in school has begun to make fun of him. Sympathetic, try to... He seems very shy and self-conscious about his communication difficulties. Your friends think that you are super... Uh, keep trying. Months pass, and Sung begins to learn English very quickly. Just think how long it would take you to learn Chinese if it was the other way around. As soon as he is able to express himself, he tells you that he appreciates your sympathy and friendship. You have made a lifelong friend. A couple of friends have convinced someone to purchase a bottle of very cheap wine. They are, exciting about, they are excited about the idea of getting drunk. Off of cheap wine. Failure to conform to peer pressure makes you emotionally stronger, but pulls you outside of this peer group. Your social status suffers, but sometimes that is the price you pay for being an independent, free-thinking person. So if you're wondering, my goal in this playthrough is to simply not die. That's kind of the point of, you know, life. Livingston, a foreign friend from Jamaica, asks you over to his house for dinner. Your first course is an interesting-looking kind of soup. You take a sip and find delicious. You inquire, what kind of soup is this? Livingston's mother replies with a proud smile on her face. Turtle soup. Uh, 
uh, open and try to eat the turtle soup. Your willingness to experience new things is remarkable. Besides, those little pieces of meat taste just like chicken. Your adventurous delight... Livingston's mom, who shows you pictures of her island and tells you about its people and customs. If every meat tastes like chicken, why do we eat other meats? Ugh. I don't know. Not every meat that say, they say tastes like chicken actually tastes like chicken. It's a stupid expression, really. You hope to spend the day with your friends when you are stopped and reminded that today is a family day. Everyone in the house will be doing chores for a large part of the day. As a reward, you will all go out to a big dinner later on. If, because family relationships are generally good, this presents itself as a tolerable inconvenience. By the end of the day, you are glad you stuck around. Ugh. Your friend asks you if you would like to be in a rock group. Ah, uh, sure. Why not? The first task is to come up with a suitable name for such a group. There are several suggestions. Choose the one you like the best. Larry and the Mumblers, the Cabbage Heads, the Tormented. I I'm fucking going with the Cabbage Heads. That sounds like a fitting name for a talent of your caliber. Shut up! Now you must choose position in the band. Well, I'm going keyboard. Fine, Maestro. Do you want to be? The band leader. You certainly have the intelligence needed for this kind of responsibility. Under your leadership, the band makes terrific progress. In the coming months, you interview every pretty girl in the school, telling them that you need a star for your upcoming rock video production plans. Yeah, Cabbage Heads. Uh, this, is, this is an interesting story of my life. And honestly, like, when I started this game, I was going to say a no, because it, it, it's just, you know, this. It's not very interesting to watch and stuff. But honestly, I'm definitely loosening up and liking the idea a little bit more. A group of kids you hardly know has just made fun of you. Usually this might not bother you, but lately you have been feeling down in the dumps about a lot of things. Their physical appearance has been disappointing you. Your family has been giving you a hard time about almost everything. No one seems to be saying or doing anything positive towards you. You have a bad case of the blues. Select a mood. Depressed or sad. Suicidal. We're feeling just fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, someone in your family. Your family is understanding and supportive. They don't actually tell you anything magical, but it lifts your spirits to know that they care enough about you to listen. Uh, John, a very close friend of yours, has been very depressed lately. You have seen him moping around the halls of the school, keeping to himself. One day, while you are running an errand for a teacher on the top floor of the building, you see a shadow swaying on the school roof. You peer through the designs in the window glass panel, straining to see what is happening out there. It's John. You call out to him to discover that he's planning to jump off. He wants you to go away and make believe you didn't see him. He starts talking about wanting to be at peace. He refers to rock stars who have died, and how will we get a chance to be with them? Anxious, but try to remain hot. Um, try to help him yourself. Even though it's an extremely tense situation, you are confidently in your ability to save the life of your friend. You snake out onto a ledge and grab John's dangling feet. You pull him to safety inside the building. In the following weeks, you have become a school hero. Like I said, this, this can get quite intense. Your family decides to take a trip across country this summer. Because you have a good family relationship, you have a wonderful time. Intellectual sphere scores rise dramatically as you learn about the country. In Wyoming, you meet a beautiful girl who resembles you about who teaches you about life in general. Th does that mean sex? I think that means sex. I think that's an 80s expression for sex. You and a friend are hanging around in the bathroom to together. You know, like you do. Your friend takes out some magic markers and begins to write on the walls. He asks if you want to write something too. Uh, he calls you a sissy and proceeds to write your name on and telephone number all over the walls. Sometimes friends can be such jerks. You are still too much young. You're still much too young to buy liquor, but your friends want to get wasted tonight. They plan on waiting outside a liquor store and asking older customers to buy it for them. Not interested. Find something else to do. 
Eh. What is so appealing about getting drunk? Like, drinking alcohol, sure, I, I can understand that, but getting drunk, no, not really. Early in the evening, a friend's mother appears mysteriously at the door and asks to speak to your mother. From another room, you hear the woman say that you've been a bad influence on her son, telling your mother that you should try harder to raise you the right way. Yeah, the, the kid who saved someone else from suicide and didn't want to get drunk. Sure. Her complaints, by the way, are totally unjustified. First of all, you barely know her son, and second, he is the biggest ju juvenile delinquent in town, without your help or anyone else's. Uh, calm and wait. You are obviously confident that this woman is not being totally accurate. You guess that your mother won't believe a word of she is saying. Naturally, she doesn't. You chose the most sure set of responses. A while later, you apply for a driving permit and have to take the written examination. Because your intelligence characteristic is so high, you have no trouble passing the test the first time you take it. Because your low calmness, practice driving sessions go very well with no accidents. Because your calmness characteristic indicates that you have a tendency to get nervous in performance situations, it takes you quite a while to pass your road test. After the fifth time, you finally pass. You have mustered up the courage to ask Faith Morgan, voted the hottest bot of the century by fellow classmates, out on a date. She looks you up and down, rolls her eyes, and says, be real. <laughs> Unflattered. Un unflappable? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't even know what the fuck unflappable means. Your guts may be turning, but outside you stay cool, calm, and collected. You are confident, but rejection is hard to take at your age no matter how well-adjusted you are. You'll probably meet someone who can appreciate these things in you. When you do, Faith becomes interested and tries to steal away. Uh, resist her? Good choice. This girl is only interested in guys she can't have. You are currently madly in love with a girl who is having a birthday next week. You are trying to think of what to get her. She has hinted about a very expensive piece of jewelry that would just about wipe out your life savings if you chose to buy it for her. Uh, mixed feelings. Not that generous. Try to think of something else. You buy her a soap dish and some hand towels. She... Dude, like, you didn't have to buy her the absolute most expensive jewelry, but fucking hand towels? There, there are quite a few rungs on the ladder in between the two. Like, have you considered, I don't know, chocolates? They're not very expensive, but they, they tend to work. Yeah, let's do it. While well, sitting around in the house with a girlfriend one night, she says she wants to give you a manicure. You know, like you do. And have a, unfortunately, next day, little do they know. A while later, you and your friend are in the living room listening to albums when your mom comes breezing through the door. As you greet her, she begins straightening out your hair. You hear your friend snickering under your breath. Because your family relations are good, you tolerate the embarrassment well, being careful not to hurt your feelings. Having high familial relationships does make the early parts of the game quote-unquote easier. Your dad's boss thinks that you are a fine young man. He would be honored if you would consider escorting his lovely daughter Matilda to the company dinner dance. Ah, uh, interested and accept the invitation. This is a very open-minded set of choices. You arrive at the country club wanting to meet your boss's... This is your dad's boss's daughter. All of a sudden, this movie star walks up to you. Your eyes glaze, your mouth gets dry, and you must concentrate very hard to prevent your tongue from dropping out. Could this be Matilda? Nope, it's some lady who thinks you work there parking cars. Eh. Matilda arrives complete with braces, pigtails, and a squeak laugh. As the night goes on, you find that she's not so bad. Dad gets a raise the following week. Now about the company picnic next month. You decide... Your dad decides that he wants to have a long talk with you about college. Oh, fuck off. In his talk, he advises you to do all the things you think you think you would like to do least. If you suggest careers you couldn't see yourself doing in a million years, 
He talks about colleges that see dull and uninteresting. Have you ever thought of going to a military college? Uh, become... Sometimes parents get overzealous at helping their children plan for the future. They may have a real need to control their children and are fearful of giving up that control. You express your desire to control your own life to your father. He has difficulty understanding why you might resent his help. Expressing yourself now prevents you from having a major blow up with him later on. Like, some of the advice in this game gives is probably worthwhile. An ad in the paper says, Wanted, young adults 15 to 20 for acting modeling jobs. Ask for a ride. Uh, it's a good thing you passed on this opportunity. Rod runs an underground illegal pornographic movie business. Getting tied up with him could mean big trouble. A while later, a close friend gets mononucleosis. Because you are in such great shape, you avoid getting it. Also, random events can kill you. Your friend of yours asks, would you like to inherit his weight set? Uh, sure. You're the type of person who sticks with his interests. You build up your body, increasing the strength definition. A group of crow... Okay, this is, this is a different life than the one I led, that's for damn sure. One of the older kids in school takes you aside and offers you a quick way to make money by dealing drugs. Nothing too heavy or dangerous. According to him, all you would have to deal is in pot and a few lewds. Not interested. Yeah, yeah, he is caught dealing three weeks later, but nothing much happens to him. Three months after that, you heard that he was jailed in South America during a drug-related incident. Uh, the people you'd never expect. You are annoyed because your father doesn't seem to be paying attention to what you say these days. He would appreciate if he would treat you more like a person. While you're trying to explain this to him, he begins correcting your grammar. Uh, yeah. So, he realizes that he's been unfair to you and apologized. The two of you gain a mutual respect for one another. A while later, it's time to graduate from high school. You can't go back to the high school icon again during this game. You have above average to superior intelligence and are an excellent candidate for college. Now you can go to college and do all that stuff, but let's... Your friends are going to the city this week to get tattooed. Do not get a tattoo. That you just saved yourself from a lot of unnecessary pain. Uh, tattooing is something else that I don't really understand very much. All your friends are skipping class and they want you to come along too. Uh, anyway. Do your schoolwork. You are very studious and very lucky as well. Looks like it was worth staying around after all. You're hanging around your friend's house. There's nobody home but you and he. Your friend goes into your parents' bedroom and emerges with this small yellow box. He opens the box and shows you his father's gun. A chrome revolver. Calm. Tell him to put it away. Acting anxious might cause your friend to tease you or you on with the gun. He did a dangerous thing by taking the gun out. One or both of you could have been killed. Intellectual sphere increases. There's a very big party happening at the house of a close friend. His parents have hired a local rock group to perform there. The party will last until past your usual curfew times, so you'd like to see your parents make an exception and extend it for this one night. Because you worked so hard in the past to get along with members of your family, they extend your curfew gladly. Have a nice time. Your parents have gone out for the night. You and two friends are sitting around with nothing much to do. One of your friends asks, what kind of poo booze do your parents have in the house? Come, suggest something else to do. You know this would be a stupid thing to do. You will almost surely get caught. Intellectual, yeah. If somebody, if you're a teenager, just say that your parents don't drink. Yeah, that, that's probably the safest thing to do. A close, your friends, your fr a close friend of yours has been showing up everywhere drunk lately. Although he seems to function well at his after-school job, people are beginning to talk about him. Concern, try to help straighten him out. Uh, insist that he does. Keep insisting. 
Your concern for your friend is admirable. It shows that you are sensitive to the amount of danger that he's in. Unfortunately, there is no way to help people like this. Denial is one of the strongest offenses alcoholics have on their side. If he ever chooses to get straightened out, it will have to come from himself and himself alone. You have just passed through the adolescence phase of life. Family life can be very rough during adolescence. Even though your family expects you to take charge of your life, no one lets you have no one wants to let you have the freedom to do what you want. Judging by your progress through life so far, your family life has been quite good, all things considered. Family members have been pains, but no one seems to mind it when you overhaul your hair for three hours every morning in the bathroom. Physically, you have been a very healthy young man. Your body image might have been a little bit of a concern to you during this phase, but you seem strong physically. Socially, this phase of your life does present its share of problems. Most of these problems fall into the category of girls. Life must have been pretty simple before they showed up. Your social adjustment to this phase of life has been remarkable. Although you do not have a steady girlfriend at present time, there is always the next life phase. Now, regarding your emotional development, you are a remarkably trustworthy young man. This trait is bound to take you far, emotionally and vocationally. You are developing into the type of adult that people can fight in. Unfortunately, the burden comes along with this characteristic. It is a tendency for people to tell you their problems. A positive aspect of your adolescence is the ability to resist temptation and not give in to your impulses. Since adolescence is the time for testing limits, this can get some people into some pretty dangerous situations. On the other hand, leading too much of a sheltered life can be boring. You seem to be enjoying most of what you do. Even though you experience the blues every once in a while, it's nice to see that you're not having a depressed, traumatized life. Even though an occasional explosive outburst is common in most adolescents, you seem to have everything well under control. You seem to be sensitive and gentle. You have a good head on your shoulders. You are not only book, sharp, book smart, but you have plenty of common sense. Now that your adolescence is almost over, it's time for you to be hurled out into the abyss of the real world. I didn't, I'll bet you didn't know that everything you did so far was part of the fake world. Next chapter. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. Welcome to Young Adulthood, and once again, I will be right back. Alright, on to adulthood. Recording? Yes, okay. So, there are seven stages of life in Alter Ego. You may play from birth to death, whenever that may be. Your game is saved automatically, okay. Uh, purchase, relationships, children, marriage, money. Now, I'm not going to go into, I'm not going to start a family or anything like that, because it, it just has a few more random events. It's a very not well-explored aspect of the game. And we can see that there are fewer overall events in early adulthood. Uh, money. Uh, yeah, we, ha we actually have to do this, though. Apply for a full-time job. What employment area are you interested in? Uh, let's go creative. I'm sorry, you have all the quality locations, but the... All right, okay. Apply for a full-time job. Creative. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, entrepreneur. Congratulations, you start work immediately. It's not really a job you apply for, but whatever. Uh, marriage. Uh, purchase. Welcome to the wonderful world of major purchases. In this icon, you'll have the opportunity to purchase the material possessions you've always dreamed about. You can either use cash or your easy-to-arrange credit program. While you're in this icon, I will encourage you to spend, spend, spend to your heart's content. But please note that spending beyond your means can, in most cases will, be hazardous to your emotional and physical health. Keep in mind, uh, yeah, buyer beware. Would you like to make a purchase? Yes. Uh, what would you like to purchase? Your salesperson will be Bob Roberts. Uh, would you like? uh I want a computer. Uh, <laughs> 512k computer with a 10 megabyte hard disk yeah rock <laughs> I, I love that this game was made in the 80s I really do 
Bad choice. Bad choice. Save your cassettes for recording your favorite songs. Uh, cash. All right. Well, now the continuity doesn't matter, so... Uh, but I'm going to warn it. Okay, we're getting right off. A friend asks if you would be kind enough to drop a package at the house of somebody who knows lives close to you. Sure. She says, Emma, you deliver the package and turn to walk away. She, uh, excuse yourself and go home. See yourself, opportunity knocked. You headed out the door. You're driving in a car with a friend when he runs over a dog. He seems rather insensitive about it and doesn't stop the car. Tell him to stop the car. Uh, yeah. Get out of the car and I'll die. Yeah, okay. Lately, nothing seems to be going right for you. It seems as though no one understands or cares about you. People want things from you, but give nothing in return. Life is miserable, and you don't even feel like waking up in the morning. Uh, yeah. Who would you like to get help from? Uh, let's see that. Okay. You're given the opportunity to participate in a charity fundraiser. The proceeds will be used to provide food and shelter for orphan children. If you decide to help out, even in the most minimal capacity, it will take a large amount of your time and possibly your resources. Uh, sure, help out. Uh, yeah. As a result, you were thanked by the person who organized the fundraiser in... Okay. You are walking down a poorly lit street late at night when you see a teenage boy mugging an elderly man. Angry, I helped the old man. Uh, yeah. The old man hugs you lightly. He was terrified. Like, if that was a physical challenge, that probably would not be the right thing to do, because if it was a physical challenge, he'd probably have a knife. Uh, uh, yeah. A bunch of your friends con you into going to a bar that features couch dancing. Couch dancing is for women, uh, okay. Tell her that you are not a... This is not your idea of a good time. A telephone call. Your father has just had a heart attack. Fortunately, it was just a mild attack. Fortunately, it was just a mild attack. He recovers and returns to work within three months. Yeah, and as you may have noticed, the random events start getting a little bit harsher at this point. And in most games, your parents will both die at some point. Like, I'm so conflicted about this game. Like, there's a, clearly a lot of effort and a lot of scenarios put into it, and there's no other games like it. But there needs to be another game that makes this more game than story. Like, it, it should have some kind of visuals. Like, nowadays we have the technology to pull something like this off. Then again, maybe it's a social time that's not the best, because some of these events, uh, they, they just would be so controversial. Your mother tells you to, your mother calls you to tell your father that he's in very poor spirits lately. He has lost his job. Talk to him about it. What is the one thing... Uh, yeah, let's go with that one. Uh, okay. Next chapter. I'm sorry, in order to play this vignette, you need to have a steady- Uh, fuck. Hell. Go steady. 
uh, that's not that's not an issue in this plot. Meet someone at work. Uh, let's go with Stephanie this time. She is not very. She is not very. Uh, she uh, okay. She works directly for the boss. Uh, let's try someone else. Meet someone at work. Yeah, let's go with Jessica. Moderately calm. Uh, she is very trustworthy. Okay. She is not very confident. She is very attractive. Uh, moderately happy, moderately calm. Not very gentle. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, go on a date with your present partner. Think about it, what it would be like to be married. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Because we just... This is our first date! Lately... Uh, sometimes the continuity can be a little bit weird. Lately, he comes home, sits in front of the television, and drinks what seems to be a large amount of alcohol. Soon he begins... One night, the phone rings. He has gotten into a serious accident. He has never he never makes it out of the hospital. His death places more responsibility on you and other members of the family. Overall stress level rises. Well, that's an interesting story. Welcome to the marriage icon. In this in order to enter this icon, you must uh, Okay. Go Go steady, yeah. Uh, uh, go steady. Live together. Okay, fuck you. Become engaged. It's... Yeah, family heirloom. Uh, sure, what do they say? Uh, okay, now they're okay with it. Now you must pick a way to propose. Which will it be? Uh, let's do it my own way. I trust that it will be creative, flattering, and most of all, tasteful. She accepts it. Okay, yay. Uh, can we do this one now? In a very subtle way, Jessica's family is trying to influence a decision that the two of you are trying to make. On one hand, you can appreciate their input. And but on the other, you are not sure that you should start allowing them this kind of influence over your lives. After all, the two of you are adults and should be capable of making your own decisions. Uh, yeah. The two of you as a couple. Okay. Someone is spreading bad rumors about you within your social circle. Because your confidence characteristic is high, you let this roll off your back with no problem. There is no sense in trying to track down the gossip monger who started this rumor. He or she is a, probably a pitiful soul who is lacking happiness in his or her own life. Ah, a first work. You are trying to move ahead as quickly as possible in your vocational life, but it is rough. The more honest hard work you do, the more time you spend spinning your wheels and getting no place fast. An opportunity arises for you to move ahead. It comes unexpectedly. A highly influential person sl slips up. You could capitalize on this error and move ahead, but if you do, that person's life will be ruined. Uh, let's you remain exactly where you are vocationally. You'll probably adhere to the belief that hard work will eventually get you someplace. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. At a party, you meet a group of people who are into the artsy side of life. They are extremely analytical people who express themselves creatively. Some are artists, others dancers, some st self-styled renaissance people. They are apolitical, non-materialistic, and consider the best decisions ones made on the spur of the moment. They are certainly different. Uh, neutral. Do nothing. 
You seem to be the type of people who is tolerant to many different kinds of people. Intellectuals, so yeah. Yeah, do what you want as long as it's not hurting you. And I'm not going to try to be like you, though. A friend of yours since grammar school has gotten mixed up in a series of bad deals, poor judgments, and impulsive harebrained schemes. He calls you up on the phone, sounding very desperate, and asks you for a $500 loan. Ask him what he wants the loan for. He tells you that he knows a surefire way to make a lot of money. His plan is to raise chinchillas in the basement of his home for fun and profit. He has a book on it. Will you... I think that's illegal. Your friend is crushed. Now he has to get a real job. You have the opportunity to attend a conference that might provide you with information that will get you further ahead in this field. Interested and in go to the conference. Uh, yeah, why not? The conference, you have wasted your money. Yeah. Warning. Okay. One of your friends is getting married next Sunday, and you have been invited to his bachelor party. The best man for this wedding has hired a performer for the evening. Her name is Helga the Norwegian Torch. Her talent is uh, setting herself ablaze and dancing until the flame burns out. The most amazing aspect of her performance is the fact that she damages neither herself nor her immediate surroundings. Eh, not interested. More than one. Pool ends with Helga... Fortunately, with the shoe. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, an ex lover sends you a dozen roses in the mail with a note. I was just thinking about you and remember the time we made love outside by the lake. I never really thanked you for it. Uh, much love. Okay. So it was a, a, a metaphor for sex. A friend from high school calls you up in a very serious tone. She says she needs to speak with you about something right away. Her life is falling apart and you're the only one who can help her. Uh, you agree to meet. Her problem is that she has just found out that she is pregnant and confused about what she should do. She can't speak with her family and her boyfriend has abandoned her. Oh boy. Try to help her come to a decision on her own. A sensitive choice. You must have realized that giving anyone such a direct piece of advice on a matter as serious as this surely would be a mistake. If things didn't turn out well, she might hold you responsible. Unfortunately, it is often very difficult to help someone in trouble sort his or her true feelings. The person may come to rely on your direction. She may begin to lean on you so that you begin to feel responsible for her, even though you do not actively try to give her advice. While I don't want to say this person can resolve a crisis only by seeking professional help, it is often the best way. The thought occurs to you that it might be interesting to travel to a faraway place for a little while and experience new things. Someone suggests joining the Peace Corps! Um, how about no? It might have seemed like an interesting thought, but it's not, inter but it's not anything you would actually do. You are about to spend the afternoon catching up on some work when your steady partner reminds you of a promise you made to go shopping with her to pick out a birthday present for her mother. You did, you did promise, but right now, catching up on your work seems to be a higher priority. Your partner doesn't seem to understand this. She keeps saying you promised. Guilty. Go shopping. Your guilt really masks anger at your partner for tearing you away from something in order to do... You resent her for doing things like this, but it really isn't her fault. You could have stayed at home. While socializing at a friend's party, you run into someone who you had a terrible crush on in the fifth grade. She looks even better now than she did back then. She is with a guy who looks like he eats apartment buildings for lunch. Uh, just, just ignore her. Oddly enough, she walks over to you and begins a conversation about the old days. You are introduced to Duke, her date, who excuses himself to look for something to eat. There is a table full of food over there that looks unprotected. Uh, yeah. You talk about how things have changed now. Everyone has grown up since grade school. The other view has kept up with anything. Anyone. The conversation soon runs out of steam, and you excuse yourself. Besides, Duke is returning from battle and may still be a bit hungry. You never got a chance to find out that she, who ha that it was she who had an even bigger crush on you. Well, it doesn't matter now. We're both married to other people. 
While you are doing some grocery shopping, you run into a high school friend who is wheeling around a small child. He is the same age as you and is a father. Eh, uh, sure, why not? It must be quite an experience to have a little version of yourself running around. What characteristics would she or he have? Your eyes, your smile, her disposition inside. Do you feel a slight... That's called the parental instinct. I hope you don't think that only women had such feelings. Uh. There is a local blood drive. A volunteer asks if you'd like to donate some blood. Uh, sure. Why not? You are a brave soul. The nurse is a very thin woman in her mid-thirties. She notices that she, you notice that she wears very thick eyeglasses and her hand shakes a bit. She smiles at you and tells you you only feel a little pinprick. Uh, she misses. You have just passed through young adulthood. Now we're at, now the game is going to try and predict my future. Let, let's let's see how this works out for us. This may have been a time in your life when your, your family activities took a backseat to establishing some independence. In general, your family relationships are good. Physically, you have been healthy. You have probably reached your peak physically. Any abuse you dish out to yourself is now likely to leave its mark. You have wisely chosen to stay away from drinking and drugs to a large extent. In this phase of life, some of the issues you have faced are what crowd of people to associate with and what material items bring recognition for them. Somewhere along the line, you may have devoted a large portion of your life to a worthy social cause like charity event or the Peace Corps. Your social, your social skills are excellent. Congratulations on your engagement to Jessica. Now regarding your emotional and personality development. You are a very trustworthy person. Even though we all have our secrets, you are doing a very good job of keeping your wilder side under control. You are taking life pretty seriously, aren't you? While you are far from depressed, it sometimes seems that you don't always strive to be the happiest person you can be. You can be sensible and understanding. You are a pretty jittery kind of person. Yeah, no shit. Occasionally, you are doing well. You certainly have had a good head on your shoulders. Not only are you book smart, but you also have a plenty of common sense. By this time, you may have been feeling a bit of pressure to achieve, get ahead, buy a house, or possibly even settle down. You have gone through quite a range of experiences already, but there's a great deal more to come. Welcome to adulthood. Life is short, the art long, opportunity fleeting, experience treacherous, judgment difficult. All right. Ugh. Not too many uh, scenarios on the board. Seven stages of life. Infancy, childhood, teenagers, young adulthood, adulthood. Last one after this is elderly. So let's try not to die. You and the love of your life have been invited to a dinner party. At one point during the night, a man whom you both barely know inappropriately brushes your partner's breast and fails to excuse himself. You get the distinct impression that this was not an accident. Neutral, uh, don't do that. Uh, yeah, let's, let's try this one. Uh, brush it off as a silly... Jolly. Is this... As it turns out, the fellow has a perfectly reasonable exploration, explanation. He apologizes and mentions that he has a mild case of cerebral palsy. He has difficulty moving around crowded rooms, and as of this, he sometimes bumps into people. He assures you that it wasn't intentional and offers you and your wife a sincere apology. By not creating a scene, you have avoided an embarrassing situation for the three of you. Uh... Plan and have a wedding, yes. Yeah, why not? Eh, small wedding. Let's go with the middle one. The suburbs. We can slide by. Determine everyone has their share of problem. Unfortunately, this includes you two. All of us hate her. She treats everyone like garbage, even you. Haven't you noticed? Uh, she hasn't... By the way... 
The door opens. Uh, next morning, uh, by car. Launched away, this is the start of life. Okay. After all, loving someone is... Okay, tolerating. Admiration will sometimes be offset by petty jealousy. Desire for will sometimes be replaced. This kind of talk may seem premature at the stage of your marriage, but within the next two years, things will start to become very difficult. The newness of your marriage will wear off, and you'll have to start coming to grips with the fact your partner is not as perfect as you would really like. This is not a bad thing, but it is reality. Your ability to adjust your partner's strengths and weaknesses and vice versa will ultimately determine the success of your marriage. Good luck. Please check your resource file to see how wedding gifts have affected your status. That's purchases. That's money. Stats. Thoughtless spending per turn. Okay. So, we got bank right now. Income per turn. 13,043 and 47 cents. 0.826086956464. I don't think uh, we have a coin for that. Uh, money. Uh, okay. The one of your dreams are, uh, are taking a weekend trip with Jill and Mark. A couple of you have known for a long time. Yeah, I love those guys. During the trip, you notice Mark becoming irritable, having loud public discussions about very personal matters and drinking heavily. You're beginning to think that Mark is an alcoholic. Concerned? Yeah, why not? This, it's none of your business what goes on between me and my wife, he says, stinging alcohol. As far as this stuff is concerned, I can stop anytime I please, so butt out, friend. They are fiddling around in the kitchen on a Saturday afternoon trying to prepare a snack. Uh, sure. Creative and can. What do you think it should add? Uh, more cheese. That's always the correct answer. A uh, fast, certain fast food Mac company. Uh, yeah, sure. All right, whatever. Still a delicious lunch. It's a friend of your closest female companion and is a staunch feminist. The truth is that she is not a feminist in the true sense of the word. She simply despises and resents men misapplying the feminist philosophy to suit her needs. Okay. One afternoon, you overhear Mary Lou telling your lover that he, meaning you, really doesn't give you that much room to breathe. I mean, he's okay, considering the rest of the garbage that's out there these days. But don't you feel trapped here in the same place day in and day out? What do you do together that's so exciting? Come. And uh, wait until she leaves. How is that not... How can... Uh, can I do this one? No. How ang- uh, peeved. Uh, this is a various uh, without any misplaced anger. You have the right to feel resentful. Your partner can sense her upset and makes you aware that she has never really taken Mary Lou too seriously. Okay. While searching through the mail, you come across a hand-addressed letter with an unfamiliar return address. You open it and read the handwritten letter inside. The letter requests that you write ten copies of it and then mail them to ten different people. It contains... Uh, uh, okay, fucking chain letter. non client do not perform the task. A few weeks later, one of your goldfish dies of constipation. Just a coincidence, you say. Don't forget what happened to poor Bubba. Alright, alright. 
You and a close work associate have to take a trip out of the town together. He is married while the two of you are out to dinner. He mentions that you'd like to go out on the town and live it up with a few women. Going along with him uh, might mean a profitable increase to your vocational sphere. Uh, excited? Go for it. You stuck... Uh, okay, whatever. Your success in the job market would be more likely if you moved to the other side of the country. Uh. Sure. Yes. Good, she tells you to... Uh, you have her time to make a decision. Even though you are sincere in your desire to get her input on this life change, she doesn't want you to leave. The whole dilemma has taken so long to resolve the pro Okay. I'm sorry, this experience requires a long, di long discussion with your father. Since your father is no longer living, this is one experience that you will miss. Uh, like, I should be angry at this game for throwing a random chance at you, but that's kind of life. Sometimes you're going to miss out on shit, and it's completely out of your control. Uh, while rubbing elbows with some trendy upward mobile types, you are past, you, you are past a small mirror, on the surface of which is a line of fine white powder. Uh, not interested. Point, pu pu uh, pass it on. You may be wondering what you're doing at this kind of party in the first place. Fads like this often have their way of touching a person's life in one way or another. They touch some, people's, some people harder than other. Snorting up some of the white stuff seems to be a preoccupation with many people your age. Some people even devote their lives to it. So, cocaine. I thought I was like a door-to-door -door salesman. Like, what does that have to do? Uh, physical. Uh, not com on a war, your, your non neighbor, uh, competitive and accept the challenge. You still have it in you. You huff and puff your way to victory. The kid smiles and puts his arm around your shoulder. It's been a while since you've done something like this. As you relish the thought of the old locomotive still, the kid tries to make you think he let you win. You are running a bit late, but you need to stop at the store and pick up a few things. You absolutely can't afford to waste any time. You notice that you have a few too many items to use the express line at the supermarket. There is a teenage boy working at the cash register. You probably won't notice if you try to sneak through with a few items over the limit. Uh, yeah. you, uh, okay. You become self-conscious and lets you pass through with just a warning. Okay, but next time. Alright. You are waiting for some important news that might drastically affect the course of your life. For some strange reason, every time you think about what's happening, you get the urge to munch on something. Oh dear. You are not a very calm person, so this idea may actually make things wor wor worse. You search for things to keep you busy, they backfire, leaving you both worried and incompetent. You are attending the dinner party of a close friend, Michael Lewis, and his attractive wife, Judy. All through dinner, Judy has been passing admiring glances your way. Neutral, make excuses to avoid going into the kitchen. Okay. Oh boy, another physical challenge. You had just taken off your socks and shoes after a long, tiring day. You would like nothing more than to begin a nice, lazy, relaxing evening. The clothes hamper seems like a mile away. Responsible uh, place the yeah. You are so neat and wonderful. This will contribute to great success in life. But once and every once in a while, you should have to you should have to let go, live a little. Uh, sure. Uh, shoot. Okay, it's back to the real world. All right. It's about time you had a physical. Uh, come, go for the checkup. Your doctor, uh, your perfect health. Your bill is two hundred dollars. 
you're thinking about whether or not you would like to invest some of your resources so that you can increase them. Uh, interested in making an investment. Put stock in a multinational computer software. Uh, yeah, sure. Your investment triples. I mean, it's computing in the, the 80s. I mean, if we were talking computing in the early 2000s, that might be a bit of a problem. You seem to be going through a difficult time with an influential business person who seems to be who seems to really enjoy making people miserable with his moodiness, his arbitrary decision making, and his arrogance. Get into his office and take heat for a relatively minor error. The conversation begins. Look, son, I've just ha look, son, I've had just about all the incompetence from you that I can stand. What do you got to say for yourself? Calm. The calmness necessary for this response is just isn't your personality. You try to remain calm, but the old man can see you are shaking in your boots. Well, as long as I didn't lose my job. A company that you were involved with is making drastic cutbacks. In the last few months, three departments have been reduced to the bare bones. Your services may be next. Uh, confidence? I guess you feel the company wouldn't let you go. That is a sign of confidence. In fact, they don't let you go, but unfortunately, the company goes out of business and you're stuck with no job. Ah, oh, for the love of shit. Uh, money. Apply for a full-time job. Creative. Congratulations, you start work immediately. With the day's mail, there's a letter from someone you haven't seen for years. In the letter, he states that you have that you have been a profound influence on his life, he still thinks about you often, wondering what you've been up to. It's funny, but you barely remember him, only recalling the fact that he was very shy and withdrawn, a social outcast. It seems that he is now president of a large corporation and is married. Uh, write him back. It's funny how people have a tendency to resurface after long periods, isn't it? Uh, job. You are being made responsible for hiring a new employee. An apprentice who will learn your job so that you can expand your work. There are several candidates available for interviewing. Max is the energetic young achiever with a degree from a large university. Harold is a casual, laid-back type. At first, at first he seems slow, but as the interview goes on, you realize that he pays attention very carefully. When he speaks, he always says something meaningful. Keep real, uh, it's just Harold. Harold is a good choice, but only for a short time. Eventually, you find his quietness a bit unnerving. What is going on in that young man's head, you wonder? Well, what's going on is he's collecting all the needs he, information he needs to start his own company, which he does and becomes very successful. Okay. Fuck you, Henry. Or Harold. Uh, the fuck you, game! Your next-door neighbors have been easy enough to get along with over the years. They haven't been perfect, mind you. They have their faults like everyone else. One of these faults is called Lucky, an annoying wire-haired terrier that makes a sound like this. Yep, yep, yep. Lucky makes his music on a regular basis, but is tolerable, and has become a part of the background noise of your living environment. You have even learned to make excuses for Lucky to your house guests, who feel compelled to offer suggestions of permanent but needless violently violent remedies for Lucky's... Lucky's parents? Uh, helpful and watch Lucky, sure. Oh, you're so kind, your neighbor says, while Lucky keeps it up to stay yip-yip in the background. To show his appreciation, Lucky trots and let... You've got to watch that, says the neighbor. Lucky gets... Six... Uh, your house becomes Lucky's playground. He isn't the type of dog who takes well to discipline. Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go do something relaxing. Okay. Lucky may be gone, but he's left you a present. By the way, you just stumbled into the very situation that helped earn Lucky his nickname. Isn't that thrilling? And we're, we're, we're now old. Your family life has been good. Physically, you have been not very healthy. You have wisely chosen to stay away from drinking and drugs. As the station... At this station in life, you have probably chosen to associate with a select group of cohorts. In general, your social skills are excellent. I hope that you and Jessica are enjoying your lives together. Now, regarding emotional and personality development, you are a very trustworthy person. Even though we all have our secrets, 
you're doing a very good job at keeping your wilder sh side under control. You seem to be enjoying your life. Even though you experience the blues every once in a while, it's nice to see that you're not having a depressed, traumatized life. You can be sensible and understanding. You are, you are usually cool, calm, and collected. Vocationally, you are doing very well, despite the day-to-day -day hassles and problems at work. You certainly have a good head on your shoulders. You are not only book smart, but you have plenty of common sense. As you approach the middle years of life, age will probably play a more central role in your experience than it has in the past. For some individuals, the middle years are a time of depression and regret. For others, they mark the beginning of settling down period of contentment. Life can always be as rich and full as you want it to be. You might not be able to climb the highest tree in the forest anymore, but now you may be but now may be the first time that you allow yourself to experience the beauty without needing to conquer or possess it. Welcome to middle adulthood. Biography should be written by an acute enemy. Oh, I, I was wrong. There's another stage after this. There are seven stages. Infancy, childhood, teenager, young adult, adulthood, middle adult. Okay, all right. All right, so now we're middle-aged. And as you can see, there are quite a few dangerous spots on the board. And four of them, but still. Uh, try to have a child. Have a child by trying to make your wife pregnant. Uh, if you want to have a baby, okay. Because we need to do some of that. Social. Sexual nature, okay, let's let's do it. What is this wife? It seems that he can no longer maintain... Uh, perfect way to start off the middle age set chapter. Sympathetic and tell him to see a doctor. He feels relieved. Now there's only one small difficulty. Uh, I'm going to see a doctor. Anxiety can certainly affect sexual functioning. Perhaps when your friend told you that he was having difficulties, it made you so anxious that you developed some of your own. Uh, let's try this again. Uh, okay. You need to talk to someone about a finance-related matter. The person with whom you are dealing has a reputation for being stern, pragmatic, and very money-conscious business type. A meeting between you and this person is suggested. Ah, uh, okay. Confident. A lunch meeting. Wait for him to order first. A wise move. Now you won't have to worry about the effects of alcohol interfering with your judgment. Good insight translates to an increase on the thoughtfulness characteristic. Because your thoughtfulness is generally moderate to strong, the meeting goes well. The outcome... Oh, yay. We have stuff. You are thinking about your life and the future. You come to a startling realization. The average life expectancy for men is only about 20 years past your current age. Uh, let's let's do something about the thought. Uh, yes, search for... Uh, do all you can. How do you do that? Have as much fun as possible? Uh, yeah, that that's... That's the right answer. You have obviously become aware of the dangers of thinking too far ahead. Oftentimes, the result of such preoccupations with the future is hopeless. An unrealistic timetable that can only result in failure. You are generally a happy person. I'm sure part of the reason for this is that you take life as it comes. This is an admirable and even enviable trait. Like, sometimes the game, uh... The game hits a little close to home for me. I'm going to admit that now, even though we're almost done. And I decided that I'm probably not going to do a second playthrough. It, it's not very different, and we're just going to be seeing other scenarios. I don't feel like I, I have to play through it, it twice to get the full experience. And I'll tell you my thoughts at the end. Uh, let's go for a risk. Lately, you've been having sharp twinges of pain localized to the stomach. The pain arrives an hour or two after eating, but disappears completely when you put something into your stomach. Concern. Go to the doctor. Your concern is justified. The doctor tells you that you have developed an ulcer. Relaxation. But, uh, uh yes, take the doctor's advice. Good. Eventually recover. 
Yeah. At first, it's kind of easy to get through this. Just go to the doctor if something is bad, but you don't always get that option. You have seen your friend John and his wife Marsha socially for a long time. They have developed a very peculiar relationship. Marsha insists on controlling every aspect of John's life. One day you are talking to John. He confesses that about three years ago he began seeing another woman who is a beautiful, kind, gentle, and loving. He has been thinking about leaving Marsha for the other woman, but is unsure as he can. Uh, the sound of breaking glass punctuates your otherwise relaxing afternoon. You are glad you don't have to deal with any part of this. I, I can't make choices for other people. It, uh, that just leads to bad situations. As you advance vocationally, you must leave your old responsibilities to various different people. On your next move forward, you are notified that a woman full of new ideas, techniques, and strategies is about to fill your old position. I'll be right back. Alright, someone was just making weird noises in the background. On your next move forward, you are notified that a woman full of new ideas, techniques, and strategies is about to fill your old position. She will not be placed without your approval. You interview, you, you interview her for the position, and she comments that while she feels you did a good job where you were, she plans on doing a better one. She sees your skills in the area that you are about to leave as limited and old-fashioned, due to no fault of your own, but times are changing. Come, but, uh, recommend someone else do the job. Uh, she's too aggressive. The people around you, your behavior through come suggests that you are reacting to her personally and not considering what someone with her energy could actually accomplish. You are asked to reconsider, but your decision will be final. Uh, fine. Against your better judgment, you recommend that she is hired. Within two months, there is a massive revolt among the people she supervises. Recommend that she... Now, so you think that you should have stuck to your original decision. Great. High energy and... Uh... Great ideas are great, but if you don't have any people skills, you're going to lose. At a carnival, your friend tries to convince you to have your cards read by Madame Natasha, a psychic medium. Uh, sure. Inside the dark room, medium Natasha looks more like large Natasha and fills out most of the space. Uh, you notice that she has a kind of face and a gentle voice. The fee for reading is 50. Uh, that's a little bit expensive for a psychic reading. Like, I mean, if it was 10 or 20, sure, why, why not? It would be fine for the experience, but the... 50? No. Especially in 1986 dollars. That, that, that was, like, 100. You and a group of friends are sitting around discussing people that you used to know. It seems that an oddball acquaintance of yours who became a recluse, always holed up in his workshop, has just invented a pocket golf ball washer that has earned him a large fortune. Pocket golf? Okay. After making all that money, instead of retiring, he has chose to donate to a charity for homeless inventors, and is now back at work. Sure enough, just two weeks out of this discussion, he shows up at a social function. Naturally, everyone who speaks to him has a remark to make about his behavior. Eventually, he wanders over to a group of people with whom you are having a discussion. Uh, yeah. In a quiet voice, he asks if he can speak to you privately about something. Uh, sure. He thanks you for the kind words and mentions that he realizes everyone around him thinks that he's a nut. You haven't really heard him talk at length, but you find out that he really doesn't care what other people think and never did. He has a very enjoyable life on the whole. It seems that he needs $5,000 of seed money to get his newest project going, a, scene, a scheme to invent a trash compactor that converts garbage that can heat your home. Uh, sure. The project is a success. You earn a total of five fifty thousand dollars Yay, I got lucky. Sure, why not? A teenage girl named Kathy Reinhardt works at the dry cleaning store that you use. One evening, you arrive at the store just as it's closing. You absolutely need to close tonight. Kathy is already at the door. Because you know Kathy by name and because you also know that she is friendly, you're sure that she will reopen the store and get your clothes. Uh, yeah. Your social skills... She reopens it for you, and as you watch her disappear to the back of the store, you notice, uh, uh, okay. Uh, try and fix the car. 
offer a lift back home. Uh, because you're relating to her more, she perceives you as a different kind of adult. Honestly curious and even envious about her life, rather than critical like most of their adults. As you begin to feel younger, she begins to feel older. She says that she hopes that when she gets older, she will stay young and attractive looking like you. You begin to realize that you could really enjoy talking. When you arrive back at her block, you discover that she lives alone. Uh, she invites you for a cup of coffee. Only home you begin to think back to the time when you were just a teenager yourself. Maybe Kathy was the type of girl you would have asked out. She was very attractive. You sigh as you are transported briefly back into another time of your life. Okay, let's let's do this. Whatever hair you have left is rapidly turning gray. I'm concerned. Do nothing. It's hair. You don't seem upset by the fact that your hair is turning gray. You must be the self-confident type. That's extremely important for this type of life. People your age have a tendency to use this period as a time for self-evaluation. Being dissatisfied with yourself or your accomplishments can only serve to heighten feelings of depression and fear related to the physical side of aging. Your lack of concern for the superficial and cosmetic aspect of your appearance is impressive. You have just walked into a store, and there is apparently no one around to take your order. It seems the person who should be waiting on you has stepped out of sight for a few moments. Waiting in the store with you is a teenage boy about 16 years old wearing an old t-shirt and a pair of blue jeans. He must have arrived a few seconds before you. He is tapping his foot lightly to the sound of an imaginary rock and roll band playing in his head. The proprietor steps out of the room in the back of the store and makes on camera with you and says, May I help you? Uh, neutral, place, place your order. Uh, no. Uh, anyone can make an honest mistake. Don't fret over it. A car has to be taken in for some minor repair work. The work will not cost you any appreciable amount of money, but it will be an inconvenience since you will have to drop the car off at a repair shop early in the morning and rearrange your usual travel plans. You call in to make an appointment and the service uh, are first. Come, bring the car in to be fixed. It's easy to see that you are an optimist. You are greeted by a mechanic who is clearly holding a book with the word appointments in big letters. You clearly recall hearing the cars will be taken on a first. Perhaps they are running a beauty parlor in the back of the garage. Uh. The mechanic apologizes for the misunderstanding. He sees that you are a calm person and is prepared to treat you with courtesy. He can give you an appointment for three weeks from Friday. Ah, uh, that's to... Surely you can't be held accountable. The supervisor relates... There is no way to be sure on which end you will have to take an appointment. Ask to speak to his supervisor. Uh, yes. Okay, during the next course of the week, your car breaks down. The cost of repairs is $200. My lord! Is this what adulthood is all about? Some back-breaking labor has to be done on your home for the next few days. The chore is unpleasant but important. No one... Pay some, uh, pay someone else to do it. Uh, pay. Peace of mind is expensive this day, but worth it. You could have really gotten hurt. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Because when you die, the game is over. During a quiet time, you begin to reflect on your life, your accomplishments, and the people around you to whom you have formed attachments. You have lived the majority of your life. And now seems like a good time as any to take inventory. You look around. You find that there are those much younger than you who have accomplished more. You have friends who have beautiful wives and large vacation houses in the country. You know people who have grown up to be great thinkers and scientists. There are people living who have made great contributions to society. Uh, can I do... Uh, content, but remain as I am. You must be either quite, you must be either quite healthy, or you're resistant to facing some of the typical worries associated with this time of life. In case you are interested, some of your friends are finding themselves terribly ambivalent about their lives right now. They are experiencing mood swings, bouts of guilt, shame, and anxiety, even panic. Since you are not experiencing any of these, it would be inappropriate to offer words of encouragement. 
I hope your outlook remains this positive throughout the rest of the game. Uh, heart. You're on a sightseeing cruise. You hear a cry and see a small boy fall over the railing to the water. There doesn't seem to be enough time to call for help because the boat is moving too quickly. Come, jump into the water after him. Calmness is a trait that is central to your personality. In this instance, you use it to react quickly and efficiently. As you enter, uh, call out to the boy. This is a good idea. The sound of your voice is comforting and helps orient the boy in the proper direction. Eventually, you get to the boy. As you clutch him in your arms, you see a small motorized Ralph from the... Your heroic efforts save the boy's life. Yay! That brings the total up to two throughout the entire game of lives that have been saved. That's cool. I'm sorry, your life history prevents you from playing through this finette. Please try another, okay? Your account suggests that some creative accounting techniques are guaranteed to reduce the amount of money you'll be giving Uncle Sam this year. This technique, the techniques have one minor disadvantage. They are in the gray area of accounting practices that fall dangerously close to the being, heaven forbid, illegal. However, the gray area is, depending on your skill of accountant, your willingness to see things his way. And the probability that your the probability that your tax return will be flagged for an audit. It's April Fool's Day, a mere fortnight away from the day of reckoning. Uh, tell him to be prudent. Ha! Ah, the account he wants no part of you in his practice. You are not progressive enough for him. Eventually, the two of you go your separate ways. You travel down the straight and narrow path. He travels down the path leading to the big house. Okay. Work. Things are becoming extremely stressful at work lately. You cannot find a single person capable of doing his or her job well. And there are pr time pressures and deadlines. You find yourself working over time. At the end of the day, you would like more than anything just to relax, but it's no use. The more you try to wind down after work, the more pressure gets to you. You're beginning to feel afraid that your work has become such an overbearing responsibility that you'll no longer be able to enjoy life. Uh... Do something about it? Okay, I'll get angry and do something about it. Uh, take a nice long vacation? Uh, yeah. You must be careful then. Some people plan such complicated vacation itineraries. The relaxed guy... Uh, okay. Social. At the last minute, you become the only person available to drive a group of five howling screechers to their school play. Uh, sure. Kids are fine. Uh... Of course, you must return home to retrieve the hat. When you arrive at the auditorium for the second time, you are informed of another catastrophe. Uh, why not? Uh, this might be the last chance to actually try to have a child. Uh, God damn it. Okay, well, that that's a sad in its own right. I, I will be right back as I use the bathroom before we go into the last chapter. Alright, last chapter. You have just passed through middle adulthood. Your family life has been good. During this phase of your life, your body doesn't always respond to the way your mind would like it to. A sore back after a hard day's work or sore feet and legs after a long walk are not uncommon. In general, you are not very healthy. Fortunately, you don't have to worry about drugs or alcohol ruining your health. Socially, you are doing quite well. I hope that you and Jessica are enjoying your lives together. Now, regarding your emotional and personality development, you are a very trustworthy person. Uh, wow, well, okay. You seem to have negotiated your midlife crisis without becoming depressed. You can be sensible and understanding. You are usually cool, calm, and collected. People see you as an extremely wise person. They rely on you for advice and are pleased with the results they get from interacting with you. The next phase of your life is full of mixed blessings. You may feel old and lonely some days, and cheerful and strong on others. Our society certainly has its share of prejudices against older folks, but you can have a rich and rewarding experience despite this. You have your chance to thumb your nose at people who think you are too old to live it up a little. After all, you're doing most of these things and enjoying them long before these people were toilet trained. Welcome to old age. It is not white hair that engenders wisdom. Okay, look at all of the uh, physical ones on the board. 
about half of them. More than half it looks. And if you, the sun at the bottom, that's the end. You, you can click it any time, but the game is over when you do that. And it doesn't throw you forward to the next life, so... Can we try this? Oh, we can try it as an... Oh, yeah. Bit late. Okay. Yeah, I've... Okay. A thought occurs to you that it might be economical, practical, and convenient to putter around town on a small motorcycle. Not interested. Uh, yeah. If you are... No. Next. Uh, okay, um, at this point you might as well just go to the doctor. Uh, uh, sure, let's, let's call up an old friend. A hunt for his... and dial it carefully. The voice on the other end sounds foreign. For a moment you wonder who it could be. Pa There's a long pause. That gentleman passed on about four years ago. By now, news like this is becoming routine. You spend the morning contemplating your own end. Uh, let, let's try picking ourselves up. This is difficult, but in this phase of life, very necessary. You are a survival-oriented individual. It's easy to give into depression and despair in this phase of life. Your positive attitude will keep you healthy and vital. Uh, can we do this one? You just read an article in the paper about the importance of making a last will and testament. Uh, pondering the article, you wonder if you should do yours. Uh, yeah. Uh, wife. Uh, have the lawyer read it. Okay. Is this not possible? Fucking hell, Rivers. Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay, so... Yeah, it's just part of the story of my life. Couldn't have a child until 60, so fucking gave up and adopted. On occasion, you must rely on a public bus to get you to and from the place you want to go. Today, the bus is particularly crowded. And you have to stand. You'll find an open area towards the back of the bus, where there is room to grasp... Okay. A fall can mean a broken hip or worse. As the bus moves, the shock of the gentle bumps is absorbed by your feet, knees, and legs. There is some discomfort. As a result, you lean slightly so that you can take some of the pressure off your back against the egg. A little girl with chestnut-colored hair and freckles, about eight years old, has been watching you. Wide-eyed for the past five minutes. Not long ago, her mother whispered something in her ears, which she looked up to you, frightened, and shook her head. No. She, after watching you a bit longer, she gets up from her seat, brushes it off with her tiny hand, and steps aside, motioning you to sit down. Grateful, and accept the seat. You realize that accepting the seat is a sign of neither personal nor emotional weakness. It is a simple fact of life. This child is young, and in many ways stronger than you. She doesn't need the seat. As you sit, the relief spreads rapidly through your body. Though soon your joints will begin to stiffen in the seating position, the child is looking at you with a great face with a great relief on her face that was nice while you were sitting quietly at a party you notice a very pretty slim young woman in a short skirt bend over to pick something she has dropped on the floor uh nice leave her alone i'm married in 60. it's a difficult time to resist such temptations isn't it uh oh Shut up. While well, driving the car one day, you notice that the turns seem particularly sharp. Uh, let's be careful. Driving used to uh, move over and let him pass. Okay, last safe one. The community council is searching for a senior member of the community to help fund, sponsor, and direct a community art auction for the benefits of some local charities. Uh, sure. Uh, 
All right, let's let's see our stats here. Got good stats. The only problem is physical, and that's oh boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Have you got a dime? Uh, sure, give him the dime. It's getting hard to discriminate. You finally find one that feels like a dime. Oh, your hearing is beginning to go. That's okay. It's a beautiful sunny day. There's a lot of outside work that needs to be done. Alert. Do it yourself. You tried to do the work too quickly. The old steam engine isn't pumping as hard as it used to be. Uh, save some work for tomorrow. Yeah. My group of men are getting together and forming a softball league called the Senior Sluggers. In order to play the game, you would have to be 65 or older. Uh, sure. No sliding. Uh, underhand. Uh, sure, I'll be the pitcher. Yay. Remember, you can die in pretty much most of these. I don't think you could have died in the first one, but I do remember dying in that particular instance at one point. Come, go to the doctor. Perhaps you have the philosophy that staying alive long enough to live for another checkup is a proof of battle one. The doctor, he checks your eyes. Uh, eating habits and send you on your way. Do I have better physical? I think slightly. That's about it. Okay. You wake up as you've gotten used to waking up slowly and carefully and prepare to face the day. Uh, cheerful and try to do something constructive. Uh, how about a visit with a friend? Okay. That's good. While you're turning the pages of the newspaper one morning, you notice that your fingers feel stiff. There are sharp pains shooting up the back of your fingers and hands. Uh, see a doctor. Uh Arthritis. Three to go. You've been expecting an important call. This could be it. Uh, nonchalant, take your time up the stairs. Visuals who survived this long have developed in a... Uh, unfortunately, it's a, you, get to, your phone is, you get to the top of the stairs and the phone is still ringing. You must search for your keys. Unfortunately, by the... If it's that important, they will call you back. Okay. Yeah, falling down the stairs. Uh, another medical checkup. And the two... Falling. You seem to be in fine shape. So I guess this is what old age is. Going to the doctor a bunch of times. It's about time that you schedule it. Is it... Uh, okay. Uh, similar. Uh, okay, can we do anything here? Yeah, have a family experience before it's all over. Uh, oh. Okay, name the. I thought. Uh, Madison. Why not? Okay. Alice has announced that all the kids at school are going to a dance that requires a date. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, third grade sex education. Honestly, I think when the game when the game came out, I think that was an exaggeration. But I think in some jurisdictions, they actually have sex education in third grade now. Uh, I'm putting off the end. Sunset. We have made it. After a long but very relaxing day, with a deep sigh, you climb into bed and sink into the warm, cushiony fabric. As you drift off, feelings of intense serenity and well-being overwhelm you. Pleasant images of childhood visit with sweet memories of mom and dad, school, and growing up. The memories flash by your mind's eye with startling reality. The smell of school on your first day. The outfit 
the outfits your very first girlfriend wore on her on your first date. You recall places you haven't vi- you recall places you haven't visited for years in picture perfect detail. Friends and neighbors who have gone on to greet you. They are filled with excitement to see you, though soon though you soon realize that they are not communicating their joy in words. It's almost as if this will go on forever. We hope you've enjoyed playing Alter Eco. Let's see. How likely are you to recommend this game to a friend? Good question. Let's... I'll be right back for a moment, and then we can do our evaluation. Oh my god. Okay. Let's see if I can... uh, Comment now. All right. Let's uh, put all bias aside and put it on the tail. Personally, I'm fantophobic. It means that I have a fear of death and mortality, especially my own. And as you might have noticed, I did get a cu- cho- choked up a bunch of times playing this in the scenes that did come through death. And I'm not going to hold that for or against the game. I, I don't think it's on the level of Terranigma or... Uh, Silent Hill 2 as far as stories go in terms of life and it's only my own personal experiences and reading it out loud that uh, do this kind of things to me. Reading stuff out loud seems to make me more emotional when it comes to games and stuff because I never really choked up before playing this game. And this is the first time I've done it out loud and actually read through my experiences. Same thing with Razor. That game didn't choke me up until I started reading out what it actually said. It makes it more powerful within me. I don't know, just hearing what's being talked about. So, when I started, I originally considered this to be a no, because the game aspect of it is very, very minimal. It's basically a choose-your-own-adventure book. However, as I played through this again, judging it as much as I can specifically for if it's a 1001 video game you must play before you die, I do have to say that, yes, yes, I feel much, much better for... I feel that my life is better for having played through this. Now, I don't consider this a quote-unquote fun experience, but I do consider it a meaningful experience. Placing an entire life just in the span of a couple hours can have a very interesting effect, something that can't be accomplished through other mediums. Now, my stipulation is that Alter Ego I consider a must-play because it is one of the few games that actually does this. I mean, it You could argue Sims and Animal Crossing are life simulators, but no, I mean true-to-life simulators. Not being afraid to talk about sex and uh, adult themes. You know, almost being kidnapped as a kid. As a teenager, there was uh, suicide and finding a gun. Risks to actual life and such. It's something that I would like them to... there's somebody out there who's looking for an idea of making games. Making a better alter ego nowadays would be phenomenal. But as we have, for what we have, alter ego, yes, I, I do really appreciate it. And we do have a new category in the in the uh, rankings. As in, games that the book has personally introduced me to. Without this book, 1001 Video Games, I probably would have never played Alter Ego. And there are definitely a few games in the book that are like that. Games that you wouldn't have played otherwise. I mean, of course, it's got all the obvious answers and even the... The obviously... And the obvious hidden gems, quote-unquote, like Earthbound for in that instance. But there were some things that I had never, ever heard about before playing uh, 
or before picking up this book in the first place. Alter Ego is one of them, Rocket Robot on Wheels is another one, and we'll be getting through quite a few of them as we go on. So, yeah. I found this to be a very moving experience, and there is uh, a lot to this game. A lot more than you'd see on the surface. I mean, it, it's not perfect. And if you want something very, very interactive, uh, it's probably not the best thing to look for. Because the pieces are certainly here. And I, I do like the writing. It can be both sad and it can be very funny at times. Uh, my ranking, uh, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, type on a new multiple, uh, no thanks. I'm not... Uh, but, yeah. Uh, and it definitely is an interesting... It helps put life into perspective in a way. You know, like, I'm not totally... I'm not totally into random chance in games, but having one or both your parents randomly die as you go on, and uh, locking uh, events... Some people might see that as cheap and just enforcing role play, enforcing replays, but no, I, I do think that it is, uh, it helps with the metaphor. It helps with the illusion. Now, I, I do believe people have complained about the female playthrough, how a lot of the, uh, a lot of the scenarios that they use are just based on appearance and being gazed at and, and stuff like that. I haven't played through the female version, so I can't give any critique on that, but at the very least, the male version, I think, is a yes. Especially because it talks about things that I have never seen any other game talk about, at least until recently. Like... I mean, like, the gun thing... Uh, that wasn't until Life is Strange. It's the only other game that I know that goes into that kind of territory. Eh. But, yeah, that's... That's what I have to say about this one. Uh, yeah. It's a yes. That's, that's my verdict. That is my ultimate verdict here.